I'm down here in the garden. It's been raining. Um, I have some peas to plant. I actually have this little pea shoot that shot up, that overwintered. And I have some peas to plant and I wanted to show you. So I actually have, these are all sugar snap peas. <laughs> Hi. These are all sugar snap peas and these are actually a purple sugar snap pea. So they're going to have purple. I got them from Baker Creek. They're going to have like really long tendrils, but like purple pods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant for every three green, I'm going to plant a purple. So, and then also leave a space for my nasturtium. So it's going to be, um, like three green, uh, purple nasturtium, three green, purple nasturtium. So that when they grow up these, um, trellises, there is a mixture of green pea pods, purple pea pods, and nasturtium flowers because the nasturtiums just love to spread out and I think they'll add like a really beautiful dynamic to the trellises. So I'm going to go ahead and get to planting and I have this thing. It's called a dibbler. I just ordered it off of Gardener Supply and I'm obsessed with it. Last year I just used like a pencil. <laughs> so this year I have this thing and the little notches. Our measurements and so since peas are like you put they want you want them to be an inch deep I just stick the dibbler in the dirt just like that Boop, and then I have my holes and I actually have another really cool like ruler coming that has holes in it um, it's on its way it's in the mail um, but for now I'm just gonna use this to measure uh, they have to be a couple inches apart like two to three inches apart and then like an inch deep so I'm gonna go get to measuring out all of that and then I'll just pop the peas in and I'll be ready to go okay I'll show you how I do it planting I have Oregon sugar pod 2 from um, botanical interest peaceful valley I have Renee's garden snap peas these sugar daddies also Oregon sugar pod 2 and then these are the purple ones they're the sugar magnolia tendril from Baker Creek heirloom isn't that cool they're gonna be purple so how you read packet so what you do is you read this right here this tells you basically you know how deep to plant it how far apart um, these are frost hardy which is why the other one popped up uh, I could have probably planted them honestly a month ago if I wanted to like really push the season but I'm a new gardener so <laughs> I will push the season next year um, so this one says space seeds two to three inches apart uh, planting depth one inch and then this one says four inches apart so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the green ones two inches apart and then I'll put a two a four inch gap and then do the purple and then four inches and then two two four and then also leave a space and I'll show you how I do that to make room for the nasturtiums that aren't ready to plant this is how I did this I actually took a measuring tape and I just brought it along the length of the bed so I could measure the inches apart I took my dibbler and I just measured I, I went ahead and, and put all the holes okay so one thing you have to do before you plant your peas though is you need to soak them overnight so I actually soaked these overnight the night before last and I couldn't get them in the dirt yesterday so I took them out of the water and I put them in paper towels like moist paper towels all last night and today and as you can see they're already sprouting <laughs> and it's only been like 48 hours since I soaked them they're just all you can see they're just all popping up with sprouts both varietals these are the purple ones here you can see the seeds are a little purple um, so they're ready to go so I need to get all of these in the dirt today so my garden design that I'm doing this year on all my beds is I'm going to be saving all the ends of the beds for flowers so all the ends of the beds will be for flowers and I'll also be planting flowers within all the veggies um, for pollinators for pest control and so I have so what I did is since I'm doing nasturtium for every 3p I'm ending each one with a nasturtium that will climb up the trellis and then this will be flowers so 
here you can see I have the two green peas starting to rain again. And then this one's further apart for the purple because it calls to be purple further apart. And I think it's because it has those crazy trellises or those crazy um, little viney things that come out of it. I can't <laughs> think of the name right now. Um, tendrils. They're called tendrils. So as you can see, I have a nasturtium. I put that little holder there. It's just this, you know, a seed, um, seed chart thing. Now, seed, I can't use my words today. Uh, so that is just a place holder. I'm going to cover it so my kids don't see it and pull it out. But it's just so that I know that's where the nasturtium will go when it's ready to put, when it's time to plant nasturtiums, which will be soon. Um, might even get them in the, in the dirt sooner than later. But so it'll be a purple, two greens, nasturtium, a purple, two greens, nasturtium, and then a purple, green, green, um, purple, nasturtium. So it's just going to keep going like that all along. I have to figure out the situation. Yeah, I think it's going to be purple, nasturtium, green, green, purple, green, nasturtium. Yeah. So I'm going to stop the flower at the end of both trellises and then do flowers on this side as well. So I'll go ahead and get those planted. And then I got to move on to that bed. I got to put that trellis back in that bed before I plant it. And that should take care of all the peas that I have sprouted so far. These are all sugar snap. So I'm obsessed with sugar snap. So I recommend planting what you love. All right. And I got to be real with you. This is kind of tedious, especially when you have like a desired look, like an outcome. <laughs> that you want to get for. So this is where the nasturtium will go. Placeholder. And you know, most gardeners I've noticed are really organized and they like plan out their garden. And I kind of drew mine out, but I kind of like to design as I go and kind of just kind of like to stand back and like visualize it. So when it grows out and I see it like come to fruition, it's like really rewarding. So I don't think you need to be incredibly organized. I just think you kind of have, have to have a vision for what you want it to look like when everything is grown. And so that's what I go off of. This is not my favorite part. <laughs> It's worth taking the time to plan it out. Okay. So now I've got my nasturtium placeholders in and I need to plant. the peas that are sprouting, I'm actually only putting one in because if they're already sprouting, then I know they're going to sprout. So I don't need to crowd them. When I don't see them sprouting, I'll put two, maybe three. But when I see a little sprout, I only put one because it's... Or when I see like a part sprout, I'll put like two for good measure. Just in case. Um... That is why I can't talk and do this at the same time. That was supposed to be a purple one. Whoopsie doopsie. There's two. Get them out. That's supposed to be purple. Okay, I need to stop talking and concentrate. Sorry. So this is my little seed starting setup. I have to set up in the kitchen table because I gotta watch the kids. I just took them outside hang out with their dad for a second. And so I just wanted to go over this. I have my seed starting little trays with the, um, with the plastic domes. So I had to, I made sure I washed them with soap and water. These have to be washed still, but hot soap and water disinfected from last year. 
Um, I already got those trays going right there. You can put them by, you know, like they're gonna get enough heat probably being just inside, but I'm gonna put them on heat pads and I'll show you my setup in my, um, probably my next video, but I wanted to show you what I'm starting in terms of tomatoes and peppers this year. So this is what I just planted. Um, I mostly order from Botanical Interests and um, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I got a couple of these little guys to keep in my greenhouse, a bunch of big ones. So we'll see what I end up putting in the garden when I keep in the greenhouse. Oh, here's a couple more. These are a mixture. These are mostly peppers here. So, and tomatillo is my goal tonight is just get all my peppers, um, tomatillos, and tomatoes started, and then hopefully one tray of flowers. That's like a push goal, <laughs> the flowers, but at the very least, this was my goal last week and it didn't happen, so um, another one. So I have a lot of flowers to plant, but I usually direct sow them, but I want to get a couple started early, like marigolds and nasturtiums. So I got my tape to tape up my packets when I'm done. I got my little um, marker cards, and I'm writing it out with pencil because I couldn't find a permanent marker, but when I find a permanent marker, I'll rewrite it because otherwise it's going to smudge off. So that's my little seed starter set up. I got a bowl of my Jiffy organic seed starting mix, and I just sit here at the table, and I just plant when I can when the kids are giving me a free moment. So I just have it all set up and ready to go, and that's how I get it done with toddlers. <laughs> otherwise, it will not get done. Fear. Three here. One, two, three. Good catch. Good catch. All right. Greenhouse update. You know, this is the content we are all here for. <laughs> At least me. This is very exciting. The sun is out today. Birds are singing. It feels like spring. It's the first week of spring my fastly becoming my favorite season now that i live in washington so this is what we got done or kevin got done it's a wee thing because it's a team effort i gotta watch the kids when he does this but it's so great it, as you can see it's completely covering my neighbor's house so we won't see that anymore although i've mentioned before once the leaves fall out you don't see them anymore anyway um they're over the ravine so they're far from the house but still it creates more privacy in case the kiddos want to run around naked all summer or we do <laughs> all right so he put up the walls and so now our goal this week is for him to get the front framed out and get the door framed out and the windows framed out and maybe even get the doors in Oh no, then he starts on the roof. So it's gonna be a pretty grand building. It's gonna be pretty big. Like, we're gonna, if you think about it, the roof, it's gonna be pitched like that. So it's gonna be pretty big. Really excited to see it come to fruition. I'll give you guys another update next week and show you what progress we've made. Little by little, getting it done. Probably not by my birthday this weekend, which was his goal, but nevertheless, it's happening and I'm so freaking excited for it.